Sound is weird. When you think about it, it's probably our second most useful sense after sight, and yet at the same time, our simplest sense. Things like sight, taste, touch, and smell all have different axes to measure on, like color, position, and chemical content. Sound can be represented by one function, amplitude relative to time, which means that sound can be graphed as sound waves and viewed on oscilloscopes. Still, the sense that is simple enough to be drawn with a single line is enough to allow us to locate things without sight, communicate, and even make music. But what even is music? At its simplest, most music will have two parts, rhythm and pitch. Just by defining which frequencies play when, you can have the simplest form of a song. And one place where you can define this data is a MIDI file. MIDI, or Musical Instrument Digital Interface, is a standard that allows synthesizers like electric pianos and sequencers to communicate. The format is composed of what notes are played and how long the device will play them, essentially a digital version of sheet music. Since most computers now have MIDI synthesizers built in, and MIDI files take up much less disk space than a recording, MIDIs were popular for games and even music sharing in the 90s. But there's one problem. Since they can only hold note data, MIDI files can't play back song vocals. Or can they? Recently, some people discovered a strange file converter online that could turn sampled audio, like MP3s or waves, into MIDIs. But as people tried it with their favorite song, something weird started to happen. Instead of hearing an instrumental like one might expect, these MIDIs sounded like someone stomping across a piano. But if you listened closely, you could make out the original song, and in some cases, even hear the vocals to the song. Now, with all of the random noise made by the MIDI, it wasn't very clear if the voices people were hearing were there or not, but this was no illusion. In 1807, Joseph Fourier published a paper that made a remarkable statement. Any function could be represented by combining a series of sine waves at different volumes and frequencies, meaning any sound you hear can be described as a combination of a bunch of different tones. Take a square wave. Surely you can't get a square shape off of a round sine wave, right? Well, actually you can. Start with a regular sine wave, then add one three times faster and three times softer, then add one five times faster and five times softer, then again with seven, nine, eleven, and so on. With each wave you add, the final wave begins to look closer and closer to the square wave. This is called FM synthesis, where waves will intentionally interfere to create any output. Since any sound can be represented by a wave, the MIDI conversion program probably picked up on the vocals of the performer, and even the harmonics naturally created by the instruments, and converted the frequencies to the matching MIDI notes. The result was a mess of tones, since the standard MIDI piano voice isn't a sine wave but the audio can become much clearer with a different voice that's closer to a sine wave. Take this recording. Space, a final frontier. In MIDI, it's nearly unintelligible. At least as a piano, but change the instrument, and suddenly... It's definitely strange to think that a MIDI, a file exclusively designed to simplify the complexities of sampled audio, could reasonably contain and even play back the sample audio it meant to replace. Of course, being that this wasn't the intended purpose of MIDI's, the quality isn't that great, and wave files are much better for recording vocals. But still, it goes to show that sometimes our most simple senses can experience the most incredible phenomena.